The Bulgarian Unique Unit is quite, well, unique. When the Konik dies, he doesn't actually die, but instead gets back up and continues fighting as a Konik dismounted. There's a few neat tricks used here to get the animations to sync up as the new unit is created. And this isn't the first time the Age series has a unit with an extra life. In Age of Empires 1, there are the Medusa and Black Rider cheat codes. The Medusa is a villager that turns into a horse archer when it dies, and the Black Rider is a horse archer that turns into a catapult when it dies. But here, the catapult just appears out of nowhere, whereas the Konik has a seamless transition between the two units. Let's examine how these multi-stage units work, and learn about the mechanics that govern dead and dying units. To get started, let me take you on a journey to... The Peaceful Pentagram of Pacifism. Here, we have a lone archer, ready to be sacrificed in the name of Lord Doubt. As we delete the archer, we'll slow things down so we can view its death animation. Units have animations for attacking, dying, standing still, decaying, and walking. The animation data has two important values, frames per angle and animation duration. Each angle refers to the directions in which a unit is capable of facing, 8 in the original game, and up to 32 in the definitive edition. Frames per angle gives the number of animation frames for each direction. The archer's death animation has 30 images for each angle it can face. The animation duration controls the rate at which these frames are displayed. The archer takes one second to play all 30 frames of its death animation. To demonstrate this value, we have an archer with a 1 second death animation duration, and a modified crossbow with a 10 second duration. Deleting both of them, the crossbow takes much longer to proceed through its dying animation. Good. Now, dying is but the first part of death. The second part is the actually being dead part. A dead unit can use various resources to decay. Each unit has three slots for resource storages. When any of these slots has store mode zero, the resource decays, starting when the unit finishes its death animation. When all of the resources hit zero, or if the unit, like our archer, doesn't have any resources with store mode zero, then the unit is replaced with the dead unit that is specified in the unit's data. This dead unit is how the Age of Empires 1 cheat units work. The Medusa has a Black Rider as its dead unit, and the Black Rider has a Catapult as its dead unit. When the units finish their death animation, their dead unit replaces the original one. Most units, though, have a corpse instead of a catapult, and the dead unit is used to control the corpse. If we look down the list of units, we see the Archer has a corresponding Archer underscore D unit. Now, you might be wondering, why separate units into a second dead unit in the first place, and why not just put all of the decay information on the first unit? Well, I suppose the game could have been designed that way, but with how things are, there are several data fields that need to change between the living unit and the dead unit. Data such as the decay animation, population space, and the resource for the corpse decay timer need to be changed, and swapping the units is a convenient way to execute these changes. While the corpse unit is on the ground, it starts to play its decay animation. This animation again has a number of frames and a duration. When the duration is finished, the final frame of the decay animation remains visible on the ground. The archer's decay animation has a 30 second duration, after which we see the quiver remains on the ground. The archer's corpse has a corpse decay time resource in store mode 0. There's nothing special about using the corpse decay time here. Any resource will do, as long as the store mode is indeed 0. The unit has a resource decay value that removes one resource per second, so after 300 seconds, this resource finally hits 0. At this point, the dead archer is replaced with its dead unit, which is set to none, so the corpse is now removed, and we see the final quiver animation frame, indeed, is now gone. Let's get back to our initial question. How does the Konik stand back up? If we look at its animation, there's a seamless transition between the two units. That's because the death animation of the Konik doesn't end when the rider hits the ground, but continues until he finishes standing up. At this point, the animation is finished, so the Konik unit is replaced with the dismounted Konik unit. The ending of the death animation matches up with the beginning of the dismounted unit's standing animation. If we look closely, though, we'll see that the Konik still leaves behind a corpse, and this corpse isn't removed when the original unit is replaced with its dead unit. That's because the Definitive Edition added in a new data field called a Blood Unit. Most units don't have a use for this, but for the Konik, it's used to leave behind a corpse when it dies. Using the Konik underscore D unit here, the corpse gets left behind once the death animation finishes and the dead unit replacement occurs. 
As one final note, in the original game, blood was stored directly in the unit sprites. But now, in the Definitive Edition, the blood is rendered using the particle system. There are a few JSON files we can edit if we want to change the blood or how long it lasts. The blood now appears when the unit finishes its death animation, but for the codec, this has a weird effect. The blood doesn't appear when the horse hits the ground, since the animation isn't finished yet. Instead, the blood splatters on the ground only after the conic finishes standing up. It's a bit of an awkward transition, as the living unit just seemingly drops a whole bunch of blood on the ground underneath it. He might want to go to the monastery and get that problem checked out. Anyway, there we have it. A few interesting uses of the dead unit and the decay animation combined to give the conic its unique ability. Thank you all very much for watching, extra thanks to everyone supporting me on Patreon, and I'll see you next time.